that's exactly as it should be. So I'm in the closing stages now. I need to make sure that the adjustment for my shutter release shaft is correct so that the film advance releases at the same point as the shutter fires. I'm just testing that. The shutter fired and the film release re was released. I'm not hearing the film release release first. But that action is very smooth and repeatable. So that's good. Right, final clean up of the top cover. I've got to clean up the meter window and the eyepiece. We need to put the spring and the button in for the meter. And we should be good to go. That the eye, that the viewing lens on the the eye, eye piece at the back of the prism here is clean. The problem with glass is you can clean it a thousand times, but you always manage to get another fingerprint on it before you've gone two steps. Meter window. That's good. The meter window in the top cover. The viewfinder eyepiece. It has marks on it, like coating marks. They're, ne they're never going to come off. But they're, they're nothing, um, nothing particularly bad about that. Okay, top cover on. Let's see if I can get those marks off there. Yes. Usually I put that screw on first. It has a, bit, a, uh, a step on it or a register. If it's not centered up, it doesn't fit well. And there are two chrome plated screws to go on here. Oh, I'll tell you what I've forgotten. I haven't put my button in there yet. Let me just get this off and put the button in place. Well, that's starting to look more like a camera now. Let me put the rewind knob back on the top. Just put something through the fork. Then tighten it up with my fingers. Okay. So there we've got a camera that looks like something. Leatherettes next. On the back, both sides of the front, and on the base. And this one I think was missing, was it? This one missing its leatherette patch on the film advance? Yes it was, so I've got to go and find one of those. Well I was able to reclaim three leatherette patches 
from a very broken and damaged piece of leatherette that came off a camera back. This is very brittle, so it didn't didn't punch particularly well. But they'll be fine. We only need one today anyway. So I've got two for next time. And the scrap that I've got left there, that'll be used if I need to cut a small patch or a wedge into something that was that lost its uh, a piece of leatherette and I just need to cut a patch into something sometimes. That'll be ideal for that sort of purpose. But I don't need to do that today. I've got my leatherette for the camera back. It's still got its bump in the middle. Which corresponds to that rivet there. Make sure we got all the rubbish out of that rivet. And I'll get these leatherettes glued on. You don't need to watch that. I'm sure you've seen me do leatherettes a thousand times. I'll show you what when it's all finished. Well there's our camera body. Nice retina reflex S, yes, all back together. All the leatherettes, even a patch on the advanced lever. This one, the exposure meter is in quite good shape. I'm quite happy with the state of that. Of course, we had to replace the prism in this one. It was just too far gone. Last but not least, I've got to service the standard lens that came with this camera, which I think from memory was a 50mm f2.8 Zenar. And there's a 135f4 telephoto which I also need to check. I'm not sure that requires any work. Well, I was wrong. It's not the 50mm f2.8 Zenar. It's a 50mm f1.9 Xenon lens. So, let's get this thing apart. This conical section in here holds the name ring, this whole filter mount uh, piece in place. I want a friction tool for that. See if this will spin it. Oh, it's reluctant. I think I'll need something on there to make that stick a bit better. Try some of this rubber sheet. That was it. That was what was required. Okay, so there's that piece, that conical section I was talking to about, and it just threads in. It's got fine threads there that run down into the center of the lens mount there. Okay, and this is the, the name ring. A little locator pin at the top to stop this rotating. Let's see about getting this apart. So first steps, there are three screws here hold the folk hold the lens capsule into the mount. I'll tip those out, put them carefully to one side. The lens capsule should drop out from the mount, and it does. I can see why the focus was quite stiff. This grease is quite dried out here on the helical, and uh, sticky, sticky with it. The glass doesn't look very clean. The diaphragm's good, moves smoothly, no uh, no problems there. I'll pop that to one side. Let's look at the mount. Now the mount, well the depth of field pointers here, that whole business is sticky. You can, that should have returned by itself. You can see that it sort of returns reluctantly and not very well. 
all of this is sticky, needs to come apart. We have four small screws from the back. Now there's a few variations of mechanism with these lenses, but they all work in basically the same way. Take those four screws, put them to one side. Okay, what have we got with this one? Okay, there's no shim washer or anything in here. This is the, the lens mount. This piece, which is quite stiff, is the coupling, the cam, that would couple to the rangefinder in a Retina 3S camera. Some of our focus stiffness is certainly down to this. This part re revolves with the, uh, with the focus ring. So back to here. Lift these components off one by one. Lay them out in order so you know which one went where. My tweezers are just a bit sticky with... Oh, I know what that is, that's tape residue because I was just busy dealing with sticky tape around the prism of a reflex camera. Not this one. Okay, so this one. This pointer comes off. Now make a note of which of these springs is connected to which pointer. This is the pointer we've removed from the top. That had the fine spring on it. There's a separator here. We can unhook the second spring. That was that's the coarse spring. That was on the lower of the two things. Now something interesting going on here. I'll show you that in a second. Okay. So if this pointer goes in here. Underneath that is this wheel. It's got a little cam follower section on it. This is all a bit sticky. Needs to be cleaned. Now our springs hook over this post here. And that post is rattling loose. I've not seen that before. It's not a good sign. I want to get the spring off there if I can because it's too easy to damage this these springs, particularly this very fine one. I'll see if I can encourage that off the pin. Yep. So that pin's loose. We'll have a look at that in a second. I want to know what's going on there. So this two, these two components, our focus scale ring and the main body here. As you can see, they're held together with a clamp, two clamps here, and there's a washer in here. It's like a nylon um, or Teflon washer or shim. Now that's all puckered up and buggered up there, and um, obviously that's not good. I'll see if I can rescue that because I don't know if I've got spare parts. So I'm just removing the screws from the brass clamps. So what happened with that Teflon? I would say to guess that this has become, the grease here is very dry and sticky. I suspect that it actually stuck to the surface and then something has been twisted and just torn it. This piece, this post here is the guide post that prevents the lens body from rotating in the, on the mount. Remove that, and that gives me access to our Teflon washer 
or space or shim. As you can see, that's not very happy looking. But all this damaged area, none of that's in an area that we're particularly interested in. So I will clean that carefully and see if I can unfold that. If I can, I'll cut off that damaged part. It's not required in terms of function, but it could cause a problem if it came adrift and fell into the mechanism. You can see here, there's lots of grease. That's very sticky and nasty. The same round here. And that's all got to come out. All of these components have to be clean. They shouldn't have any of that filth in there. So I'm just going to start cleaning things with naphtha and a cotton bud. Let's get this clean. That's the post, that pin there, I think it was pressed in, and obviously it's come adrift. I don't think that, I think I'll be able to put that back in place, possibly with a drop of glue, if it doesn't look like it's going to stay there. I've never seen that pin come loose before. I would have assumed that it, that would be riveted in place. But it doesn't look like that's the case. There's nothing on the back side of it at all. So it has to be said this lens is not a good example. Usually the ones coming my way Don't suffer from as many problems as this, or the problems are only small in number. It's not uncommon for things to be sticky with dried grease, but I rarely find other mechanical problems with them. Now these two little gears here counter-rotate with their depth of field pointers and make sure that that all moves smoothly. It feels good run a bit of naphtha on there. My main concern here would be either that there was sticky dried grease had got down into the pivot where those things are rotating on or lumps or bumps of dirt or dried grease or grit or something else had got into the gears and was preventing them from rotating smoothly. But I see neither of those problems there. They seem to work very well. I'm just wiping very carefully around these internal surfaces here to get out any embedded dirt and grease. This whole mount's a bit grimy. Yeah, that grease is, is dried out. It's gone like a lacquer in places here. So it would have got quite sticky before it got to that stage. We'll start with that piece. I'll move on to this piece. And uh, there's nothing especially exciting or taxing about doing this. It's, it's just tedious. And this grease I'm getting out here are on surfaces that would not have had any grease on them originally. It's grease or oils that have migrated from elsewhere in the mechanism. And that's just a product of age and probably if the camera had been somewhere very, very warm like the glove box of your car or sitting on a windowsill in the sun or something well that tends to make lubricants get very runny and find their way to somewhere they shouldn't be
It's looking a bit better. There are lots of small grooves and crevices here. I'm trying to get all the rubbish out of every little nooks and crannies. And in particular, I don't want a particle of something like a little bit of grit or a dried piece of dried out grease or something that falling into the mechanism later and causing things to fail to move smoothly. Well that looks okay. I'm just going to try this in the mount see if there's any problem. That revolves smoothly. There doesn't, doesn't appear to be a nuisance there. This little pin Have a look at that. Alright, let's see about locking that in with something. Well here I've got a staking set, which is a watchmaker's tool used to uh, effectively rivet things over. Now I've got a stump in here, which is like a, a short extension with a hole in it that matches that pin. So I get that pin seated into that stump, I think I can drive the thing home. And the advantage of this is it keeps everything in line. That hole doesn't look exceptionally round to me. Try tapping this in. I've tapped that in flush with the surface on this side because of course that pin would have risen out of there and it could have caused problems. And that post is now firm. So why that should have come loose I have no idea. But come loose it certainly had. There's no sign of that moving. I'm quite happy that's done the job. So basically this pin was pressed in, but it, for one reason or another it had gone back out. I can't think of any good reason for that to happen. Well that pin's not firm enough in there for my liking so I'm going to clean this very carefully and put a touch of adhesive on there, super glue I think, same in there and then press it back into place. I'll start cleaning up this shim. I've never seen one damaged quite like this before.
I don't know whether that can be encouraged to lie flat or not. It is slightly torn right across that edge. I don't know whether that would cause any issues. I think the best thing to do is just to put it back and see what happens. It's certainly all there still, it's just um, not in good shape. Well, that's where it sits. I think I'll put this back together and see how we go. When you're putting these things together, you've got to make sure that your focus scale numbers come somewhere near the pointer at the top. Because there's a stop in here, which prevents the rotation of this beyond a certain point. You don't want to run into that or pull things down on that and cause problems. That sits on there like that. Yeah, I'm not exactly happy about that. I don't think I've got one in my spares. Well, I've put a bit of tape over the top of that in an area that doesn't come in contact with anything. And I'm hopeful that that will hold that shim together. And I won't have any further problems. So I've got to put my clamps back in place. These all need to be cleaned and then we'll see how we get on after that I think. At the moment I've just got this sitting loosely on the base here to support it. But I'm reasonably hopeful this will go. I just need to clean up the other components really. And um, after that, we'll just have to suck it and see, as they say. <laughs>